like maybe the trip reports, like if that's really crazy, like, yeah, that's a cool thing to, to tell that story or whatever, but telling the story of like, what did you gain from the trip is almost more interesting, you know? And, and like, yeah. so often does that involve the, the, th- the things you were talking about, you know, um, whether it's uh, doing uh, meditation or yoga or, uh, a healthier diet or what, you know, whatever. Uh, it, it's just, it, it's great that, you know, we've kind of found these kindred spirits that, that like think of that as the most important aspect of all this, or at least, you know, something that's interesting enough that it deserves just as much discussion, you know? For sure, man. Yeah. And just how, how like Eastern practices and just spiritual practice in general, and how they tie into psychedelics and how I found them both simultaneously at the same time. And like during the time, like the summer of 2016 is when it was like all going down. And like, it was just blowing my mind how when I go into these, you know, LSD experiences and stuff, how just similar it was to deep meditative states and how it was so similar to just even the random random awakenings I was getting sober. Like that was happening to me sober too during this time. And just super interesting. <laughs> like, it's yeah. just, I, I don't like I, at the time I was on YouTube and I just was wondering why nobody was talking about the correlation of the two. Like you have the, the group of people who talk about psychedelics and then you got, you know, the people who are into the Eastern religion, but they don't ever like come together. Or at least they didn't at that time. I'm sure they might be more now if you dig deep enough, but at that time it wasn't and it was like blowing my mind. Like it felt like I was the only one, you know, that discovered this, at least where I live, like nobody is into this shit around me at all. So that's why I really love the discord because it gives me that outlet. Yeah. Well, I mean, and that's such a common thing, you know, and, and whether or not it's, it's uh, where you live, it just could be your situation. Like I, you know, uh, I believe that you're, uh, you know, immediate family at least is okay and under knows what you do, you know. But there's yeah, yeah. there's so many people that it's not even like their neighbors or what. They, it's like they have to hide their discussions and their activities from. Oh, their, I mean, their, I their I, their I, wife, I do, you know? I definitely do do that. Like not my not my wife or you know, but like my mom and my dad. I think my dad might know. You know, I partake in cannabis, but and my mom probably does too because I talk you know, about it and all the medical discoveries and stuff with her. And I'm not like, you know, if she ever brings it up, I'll be like, yeah, you know, I do, you know, it's not a big deal, but yeah, psychedelics is just having kids, you know, and, and I just not ready to come out all the way about that with just everyone, you know what I mean? Just until it becomes more normalized because I mean, shit, CPS can just kick your door down and just take your fucking kids and lock you in a cage. So <laughs> not about that. So Yeah. 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 I mean, that's the, that's the, the, the damn shame to where, you know, CPS isn't going to come if you were prescribed, you know, uh, three different antidepressants and anxiety medication and you're sitting there popping pills all day, like CPS, you know, wouldn't care about that. Cause that's the medicine you're taking, you know? And it's like, but if you're taking, if you're trying an alternative uh, medicine to take care of anxiety and depression, like if, just if you're microdosing, you know, if it got out there or someone wanted to fuck with you and reported you that, you know, you were microdosing mushrooms around your kids, like that, yeah, they would, you know, yeah, come fuck with you over that, you know, <laughs> and I mean, it's a damn shame, and and you know, part of the whole idea with the podcast and when I started a YouTube channel and all that is like, um not talking about it is is worse than being like i can't talk about it publicly in my you know direct sphere of influence you know and so like that's the thing is like we all together have to uh broaden our sphere of influence and use the tools that you know are available to us through technology with with the internet and and you know that's where the discord server and in in social media in general and YouTube and podcasts and all that come into play is that like, we, we have to still be careful about it, but we also still have, we have to talk about it. Exactly. It's a, it's a damned if you do damned if you don't for sure. Yeah. Yeah. 
like get real torn I, over that sometimes. Right. Like I should be able to like go knock on the my neighbor's door next door and be like, you know, hey, I heard you guys are having marital problems. Here's here's some doses, you know, that that should fix her up, you know. <laughs> That'd uh, be so cool. <laughs> But hey, instead, I grew these I, for you. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know, but but instead, I have to, uh, you know, do a YouTube podcast Discord thing and hope he finds his way there. You know, <laughs> like that's, um, you know, that's kind of where we're at with with everything. But um, yeah, it's a shame, man. It, it makes you feel so good too. Like a guy that I work with, uh, he's a younger kid. He just moved up here, and because uh, his dad lives up here, and his dad, he hasn't, you know, seen him or seen him very much in the last decade or whatever. And, uh, so he's up living with him now. Well, he got a girlfriend here at my job. So now he's just like with her all the time and like never visits his dad. Well, I grew some, some mushrooms and I made some, uh, some of that blue honey. And I've been, you know, I, I don't feel like I need to trip anytime here soon. And I'm just kind of, you know, uh, hurting our money so i sold him a little bit of honey and him and his dad fucking took it and they actually like had a bonding thing so it like made me feel yeah. good you know what i mean like they actually got to bond and it was because of me and i decided you know i decided to grow them and because i decided to grow them they it created that you know i like that yeah no i mean i've i've heard several stories of that too you know like um like was it? Oh, this is our our last episode. It, um, uh, our guest had given somebody some mushrooms, and like they ended up calling a friend they hadn't talked to in forever, and talked for like three hours. You know, yeah. and it's like it, it it has that like, and it's not just mushrooms too. I mean, I I felt that way the last time I took acid, where you know it just has this like bond building, social like connection, need for like positive connection, you know, and and healing of past you know bonds and or, or uh, broken bonds and you know like friends that lost touch and were mad at each other over something you know it, it makes you want to be like ah i forgive it you know and, yeah. and whatever and and reconnect and talk and say you're sorry and like i don't know it's just like yeah that, that doesn't sound like something that should be illegal yet it is you know and it doesn't sound like something we shouldn't be able to talk about yet we're not supposed to be able to talk about it and and it's just a damn shame, you know? Um, yeah. Yeah. 